I got a lot of positive feedback on my last video, so since y'all asked for it, I'm going to make a part two, or a part three, I guess. Well, I'm, I'm making another part, and I'm going to be making the camera system. Now, first of all, I did change a few things around here. Um, most of it's just back and stuff, but noticeably, I fixed the fan, so it's not jittering anymore. I said it was um, really hard to fix that, but it was actually very easy. Just a little recap of what happened in the last video. Um, got the lights working, the doors working on both sides, and the nose honk. So I guess it's time to start the camera now. So here's the camera arrow. Let's see if it looks nice on the screen. Yep. Let's see, it comes with its own mouse entered and mouse exited function. But the only problem is that if you move your mouse too quickly, then the mouse might go underneath it and not actually lift up the camera. So I'm going to have to use, you guessed it, another collision shape. So here's the area. Now when I put my mouse on top of it, it's going to print true, which means the camera is up. And if I put my mouse over it again, it's going to say false. Well, okay, if I move my mouse like like uh, out of the window, it's going to count it as well. But in full screen, it doesn't really matter. So I need to add the, the panel flipping up once again. I'm just going to steal all of it. So I'm going to add an animated sprite 2D to the GUI. And I'm going to have to layer it properly. There's the camera flip animation. Now I don't know the frame rate because Click Team doesn't have that for some reason. So I'll just like set it to 30 I guess. Now let's test out the panel animation. So put your mouse over it. Oh of course it's not going to work. Because I forgot to make it visible. Yeah, maybe it should be visible in order for it to be seen. Oh, wait, it's still not working. Oh yeah, you have to set it to true, obviously. Now, let's try it out. Okay, that, um... So I believe I have to turn off this animation looping option, and let's see it. Okay, come on, come on. Okay, there, it's filling up the whole screen. You put your mouse over it again, and it's going to go away, well, but not all the way, because I, I don't know. So I'm just going to make the panel hide once the animation is done. So you flip it up. Why did that not work? And then I'll flip it down. Huh, that's weird. So apparently um, animated sprite 2Ds do not um, pass through the animation name. So yeah, there we go. So it's going to go invisible once it appears. Now. Why is it doing this thing? If I bring my mouse like below the arrow and then I bring my mouse back up, then it plays the animation again. So I don't know why it's doing that. Maybe it has something to do with this camera arrow. So set the filter to ignore. Let's see. Okay, yeah, that was the issue. So I'm looking at footage of the original game. And for some reason, Scott made it so the camera goes above all of the GUI, which is very weird. And I do not res respect this decision, but it must be done if I want it to be accurate. So with that out of the way, it's finally time to add some sounds. I'm trying to find the sound of the monitor being flipped up. Okay, apparently it's this one. Camera video low 60105303.wave. Everyone listen to the sounds I just added. Yay. Oh wait, oh, I just realized you're able to like, flip the monitor halfway. It's kind of like what you were able to do with the door. Alright, I think I fixed that. Yep. No more fun, but it's a lot more stable. And also I gotta stop the flipping up sound once I flip down the camera, because for some reason it also has like a little other sound after it. Now it's time to add the actual, you know, cameras. So, all of the cameras are actually just one sprite with a bunch of animations on it. Of course, since this is Scott Cawson, uh, none of the animations are named, and they're all just called Animation 13, Animation 15, Animation 16. So, yep, I'm not getting the textures from here, I have to use the texture pack. I'm going to start out nice and easy with the show stage. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this image because this image does not actually show up in the game. 
Yes, the image does not show up in the game. If you think that image shows up in the game, it's just a Mandela effect. Now here are my naming conventions. So if you're wondering what Stage BF stands for, it doesn't stand for Stage Boyfriend, but it stands for Stage Bonnie Freddy, because Bonnie and Freddy are there. And of course, Stage BCF means Stage Bonnie Chica Freddy, and then we got Stage Freddy, Stage Freddy 2. So I'm just going to like, whenever the animatronic, depending on where they are on that camera, is going to switch between these animations. And I find it really weird how like, the background changes and the lighting changes when they're all there versus when they're not. I don't know how Scott messed that up. So I flip up the camera, the show stage appears, I flip down the camera, and it goes away. And I'm also able to control the camera, which is really cool. It would be nice if you could do this in the real game, but unfortunately I have to fix that. So if I put it on a separate canvas layer, then it's not going to follow the camera. So let's give that a try. Once I flip up the camera, then you're not able to move it around. Now, there, I'm going to have to make it automatically pan left and right, which you can easily do with an animation node. But first, I got to figure out the timing. You got to love how Scott never names anything, but when he does name something, it's like really weird. Like, Fox Activity, Freddy Bear, Got You Left. Maybe Scott is just a genius at naming things. I finally found it. It's called Screen Follow 1. And what does it look like? Okay, great. I didn't ask you to go in full screen, but sure, I guess. Ignore everything that just happened. So here's the panning animation. It's just going to pan to the left and then wait a while and then it's going to pan to the right. And then it's going to wait a while, and then pan to the left again, and then back to the right, and then to the left again, and it's just going to repeat that over and over forever. So take a look at this in-game. I just realized that you can see like all the way through Chica from like the right hole in the body all the way to the left. Now I want you to pay attention to Chica's plate right here. So notice how the plate is clipping all the way through her arm. Now pay attention to Freddy's hand. Notice how his endoskeleton is clipping like all the way through his hand. Sorry if I ruined that for you. Now I'm going to add in the static. So it looks like the static doesn't use any shader, it's just transparent, so that's cool. I'm just going to turn down the transparency to like, I don't know, 40? Alright, this camera's looking a little better now. So now there's a white frame around the camera, which I guess just makes it feel more immersive. And I'm going to get in that uh, red little blinking thing. I think 0 0.7 FPS is good. I think it's blinking about just the right speed. Also, yes, I have realized that I'm paying way too much attention to detail now. That is probably my OCD. And yes, I actually have OCD. I'm not just saying it. Wow, that is a nice, authentic camera. So this also has an animation, apparently. Now let's just put this right in the corner, about here. So, we have a camera. Now we need to have a working camera. So this is going to set the animation of the camera sprite based on where the animatronics are. So right now they're all on the stage. So let me open it up. And yes, they're all here. Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica. All on the stage. So let's say that Bonnie goes somewhere. So now when I open the camera, it's going to be just Freddy and Chica. And it gets darker for some reason. Now let's say Chica leaves somewhere, and then it's just going to be Freddy all alone with no friends. And of course, if Freddy leaves, then they're all gone. They're all out to get you. And I'm pretty sure you can have just Freddy and Bonnie on the stage. Let me check real quick. Yeah, so Chica's gone. Now it's just Freddy and Bonnie. And I know there is this Easter egg image, but I'm not going to do that right now. It's, go it's going to be like more towards the end of development. So I guess it's time to add in all of these buttons. I actually don't know what node I'm going to use for the buttons because the buttons have like an animation where they like like blink on and off, like green and then black, and it uses an image for that. Now, I don't I don't know what node to use, like an animated sprite 2D. Okay, so here's what I did. So since the button needed to have text on it anyways, I put this label inside of an animated sprite 2D, and 
The label comes with its own GUI input signal, so that's what I'm going to use to detect clicking the buttons. And now, I just need to add all of the other camera buttons. Ah, now that's finally out of the way. And as you can see, every time you click one of the buttons in the editor, it brings up this stupid sprite frames menu. And even if you click off of it, this menu won't go back down. And it's really annoying to have to fight with it all of the time. Oh man, um, yeah, the text does not look that good. Uh, uh-oh. I mean, it looked pretty good here in the editor, but not in full screen apparently. So I guess I'm going to use the images that Scott used for the camera text. And I have to do this one at a time. Now that that monotonous task is over, it's time to start a new one by removing all of these labels from all of these buttons and replacing it with an image. Okay, there's something a little off about this. Oh my goodness, what is happening there? And if I set the filter to nearest, it should sharpen it up a lot. And I think I might actually want to do that for these as well, for the actual buttons. Yeah, I think that looks better. Maybe even for the map. Just setting the texture filter to nearest seems to fix everything in this game. I might as well do it for the arrow as well. Anyways, um, back to manual labor. Oh wow, you gotta love how Godot doesn't let you paste things into multiple nodes at once. So I really do gotta go by one by one for some reason. So open the game. Let's see if the buttons look good now. Yes, those buttons are looking nice and sexy. We did it. Well, actually, um... You guys didn't do anything. I did all the work. So, did you think we were done? Aw, that's cute. But no. These images are smaller than the buttons. So, in order to get, like, the full button to be detected when clicking it, I'm gonna have to use Area 2D. Now I've gotta add a script to every button to make them clickable and do stuff. First, I wanna see what it looks like when you switch the cameras. So I got this footage up again. All right, wait, go back. Go back to the camera. Wait, 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 oh, oh, he's flipping it. So, click the button and what? The blip flash appears and that's about it. Okay, I thought the static would like flash, but apparently not. Here's the blip flash. Uh, I don't know if that's too fast, but what do I know? I might just insert an empty frame at the beginning because it seemed like it was delayed by a frame anyways. So I attach this script to the camera button and once you click it, it should show the blip flash and play a sound. So I'm going to click it in 3, 2, 1. It worked! Now I added an export variable which tells what the camera is so I can go ahead and type in the actual name of what the cameras are. So the buttons can now receive the switch camera signal, and if it's their camera, it's going to light up green, and if not, it's going to switch back to being gray. So let's just test that out. Uh, okay, well it seems to be a little broken. Uh-oh, wait, what did I press? Okay, it looks like I pressed the light button while I was in the camera. Now it should work. Yeah, you can click the buttons. And it should also, like, blink. I don't know why it's not blinking, though. Okay, instead of changing the animation, I'm just going to call the play function. Now the camera buttons are blinking when you're switched to them. Now I have to modify the actual camera sprite to include all of the other cameras. So, is this going to be the last manual labor section of this video? Let's see. I think I got all of them, so that's finally over. Now I didn't add every image to the sprite yet, I just added like the empty images with no one there. I'm not really going to worry about all of the cases right now, let's just see. So you can switch to the dining area, uh oh, the, the backstage didn't work. Well the Pirate's Cove does, and the closet, and this, and this, and everything, uh, not the kitchen. 
Oh boy, 172 errors. So I guess when you switch to the kitchen, it's just going to turn black so you can't see anything. Let's see if that works. Yeah, the kitchen just turns black and the backstage works now. So yay, all the cameras are here, I guess. Okay, now I need to fix this, where you're still able to interact with stuff when the camera's up. So you just gotta check if the camera isn't up before processing any inputs from the Area 2Ds. Let's see. Now, yeah, when the camera's down, you can click the light. When the camera's up, uh, you can still click it. What? Okay, there's something weird going on where I'm able to turn to the right faster than I can turn to the left. It should be fixed now, so I'm going to try to turn on the light when the camera's down. Yeah, that all works like normal, but when the camera's up, you cannot click these buttons. I am clicking over here. You can't hear it. I don't think my microphone picks up the clicking sound, but I, I promise it's not working. And the uh, same thing for this side, yep. And you're also not able to, like honk the nose or look around while the camera's up but i'm still getting this weird thing where i can like move to the right faster than i can move to the left i know how to fix that but first there's something i need to do so now it calls the switch camera function whenever you lift up the camera so it's going to give that effect where right when you switch it up what i i was just explaining it and then it's going to like not work Okay, well, it was working, but it just didn't do the effect. So once you lift up the camera, it's going to it's gonna play the blip flash. And I can use that to fix the bug of the office panning not working correctly. So this should hopefully fix it. Uh, I think I have my mouse over it and then lift up the camera. And then lift it down, and now you can still view normally. There you go. So sometimes you have to add a feature to fix a bug, I think. Now that's about it for this episode. I did say I was going to do a bit of the UI, but I guess technically this is UI and this the camera arrow. So I did do that, and the place is feeling a lot more lively, or I guess a lot more big. I, I wouldn't really call it lively. This place is kind of dead. But if you enjoyed and you want to see more, Leave a comment and I might include it in the next video. So thank you for watching.